Welcome to Lake Highlands United Methodist Church to our Church at Home edition. Uh, we're glad to have you here today. Uh, my name is Pastor Andy Roberts. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Lake Highlands United Methodist Church. Our senior pa pastor, Jill Jackson Sears, will be giving the message just a little bit later this morning. I also want to introduce David Lucky is going to be leading us in music this morning. Uh, Martika is videoing us and producing this, and we're thankful for Joey on the soundboard. Uh, all of our good folks are serving in, in unique times, and so I just want to acknowledge them and give thanks to them and for their service uh, to our church and to our community uh, during this time. If you're joining us on this Facebook watch party, we want to encourage you to greet one another in the comments, and you can even share prayer requests in the comments, and we'll be able to get to those later. We won't be able to get to pray with them during this service, but we'll, we will get to those at some point and be able to pray for those. Uh, a few announcements I want to share with you, some great things that are still happening in the life of this church, even in this unique time. Our youth are continuing to meet online for Sunday school and for Wednesday night Bible study and for small groups, all online. And so if you want more information about that, you can contact Rocky. Uh, will, uh, weekly children's lessons are still being put into our kids as well as weekly Bible verses on our Facebook page. So you want to make sure you stay connected in all of these ways. Um, we have a, something, a couple of new things we're starting uh, this week. We have a Wednesday night live prayer meeting that's going to be on Facebook at 6.30 p.m., this coming Wednesday, uh, March 25th, and so you can email us your prayer requests, and we'll be happy to pray for those live uh, on, during that evening. Uh, we're starting back our men's Bible study on March 27th at 6.30 a.m. using the Zoom app, and um, so if you want to be a part of that, email me. All kinds of other opportunities. Um, Starting this Monday, March 23rd, we're going to be sending out a daily devotion via, via email based on our 2020 reading plan. Uh, some of these will be written devotions, some of them will be video devotions, but these are just ways for us to stay connected with one another, and so we hope that you will enjoy those and those will be a blessing to you. Uh, we're living in a unique time, obviously, as we're practicing social distancing from one another. Um, and our church, much like every other organization, is having to react in new and different ways. Uh, but even as we're being stretched, the Holy Spirit is growing us and is working in unique uh, and incredible ways. And, uh, and so we're seeing Jesus everywhere in 2020. And that's really been our theme in our church for all of 2020, seeing Jesus clearly. And so let me just mention a couple of ways. We're seeing Jesus as we serve Austin Street Shelter and, and through our Carter Blood Care. We're seeing Jesus in the ways that our Sunday school classes are connecting and they're taking care of one another. And many of them are even meeting online using various, um, various platforms. Um, we see Jesus in the ways that our staff is reaching out to vulnerable members of our church and in our community. And spirit is at work. God is doing something incredible uh, even in this time. God is not done with us. Uh, your church is here for you, and we want to help you however we can during this time. Um, because we're not able to collect Sunday morning offerings, uh, we would ask you to take a few moments even now, and you can uh, click on the Give button on our website at lhumc.com. Or you can take a few moments to write a check to Lake Highlands United Methodist Church. Uh, if you're watching us via Facebook uh, right now, there will be a link in the comments, and you can just click on that, and that's a way for you to continue uh, to support our church during this time. So we thank you in advance uh, for your generosity in that way. Everything that we have is from God. It's a gift of God's grace, and so I'm so thankful for the amazing grace of God, which we get to celebrate now at this time. Would you join us as we worship together? How precious did 
that grace appear the hour I first believe my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy Amazing grace. Aren't you thankful for God's grace today? I invite you to sing this with me. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He my shield and portion be as long as life endures and my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a Mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. And my chains are gone. I've been set free. And my God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a blood, mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a blood, His mercy Unending love, amazing grace, and like a flood, his mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. Let's pray together. God, your grace is so amazing. We thank you that you love us exactly the way we are, that you love us too much to keep us the way we are, that your love pursues us, your love justified us and rescued us and saved us, and your grace changes us transforms us and makes us into the people that you have created us to be. And Lord, we trust even in these moments that it's your grace that sustains us. Lord, it's no secret that we're living in challenging days. We live in anxious times. We live in uncertain times. Times like most of us have never experienced before. But we know that your love is the same. We know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We know that your grace is offered to us continually at each and every moment, at each and every space of our lives. 
in every nook and cranny of our homes, Lord, there is your grace. And so we can't run away from your presence. You're always reaching out for us, always pursuing us. And we say yes to your grace even this day. We're desperate for your grace and for your love. So minister to your people now, even in these moments and these times, we ask in the name of Jesus and all God's people say together, amen. I want to give God some praise that we are able to get together and worship in this way. Of course, it would be better if we saw each other face to face, and I look forward to that day. But in the meantime, we get to worship together, and so I praise God for that. Our scripture reading today comes out of our Bible reading plan. So if you are reading along, or maybe if you haven't even started, it's a good time to jump in. Um, you can check our website, lhumc.com, for our Bible reading plan. Um, today, our scripture passage comes from the Gospel of Luke, at chapter 22, verses 39 through 46. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, open our minds, our hearts, our lives to what you need us to hear today. And as we hear you, may your words transform our hearts to become more like Jesus. For we lift up this prayer in his holy name and all of God's people together say, Amen. What are you afraid of? I am deathly afraid of heights, and it comes naturally. God made me to be all of five foot one inches. And so, being close to the ground, I like to stay there. When I go to stay at a hotel and they put me in one of those upper levels and I look out the window, I can feel my palms sweat and that sinking feeling in my stomach. I mean, I am deathly afraid of heights. And we're all afraid of something. Especially in this time, we see people who are afraid that they're not going to have enough supplies, enough toilet paper. We see people who are justifiably uh, afraid of sharing germs, getting sick, getting a loved one sick. And as we listen to the news feeds and the media, it seems that these fears that we have just get intensified. We live in a very fearful time, and, and we all have fears. And we're not alone. In our scripture passage today, we find Jesus and his disciples going to the Mount of Olives. Now remember, we are in the last part of Jesus' life on earth. And he's headed to the Mount of Olives. And I, and I have a picture of the Mount of Olives here for you. Our church went on a tour of the Holy Land a few years ago. So I want you to kind of imagine, if you will, what it was like for Jesus to lead his disciples into this garden into this place. And he tells his disciples to, to go and start praying. And then he steps over a little bit, about a stone's throw from where they are, and he begins to pray. And the prayer that he prays is not an easy one. Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, 
but yours be done. And we're told in the scripture that he prays in anguish. For you see, Jesus knows he, he doesn't know all the details. He doesn't know exactly how it's going to work itself out. But he does know that he is going to be humiliated. And that he will endure great suffering. And he will experience tremendous pain. And, and in this moment, in his anguish, we get a full picture of Jesus' humanity. Of his fear. At the same time, we are told that in the midst of this prayer, in his anguish, an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. So here we also see a full picture of, of Jesus' divinity and this intertwined relationship he has with the Father and the Holy Spirit that as he starts to sink into this place of despair... This relationship builds him up and strengthens him for what he will endure. Not only the suffering, but leading him and strengthening him to go to the cross where he will take on the sin of the world that we might be set free by his grace. Bringing him to the place of the empty tomb where we will be set free from death. Jesus is strengthened in that moment of despair. That's how God works. But how does that work in our lives today when we might find ourselves in anguish and fearful? Well, Jesus shows us. In fact, he leads his disciples in telling them to go and to pray. Jesus prays. He shows us the importance of that. For in prayer, we can find our strength in God. We can receive the strength that God has for us. And it doesn't have to be anything complicated. We simply share our words, our life with God. And maybe for you, that looks like a prayer walk around the block, praying for your neighbors. Or, or maybe it means writing down your prayers in a journal. Or, or finding a circle of friends with whom you can pray in this season. Simply sharing life with God, sharing our words, and receiving strength in those moments. Because I think it's tempting for us, like the disciples, to get caught up in our grief and just want to sleep. And fill our minds with, with mindless content. Just try to numb ourselves in the season. Jesus calls us to a different kind of life. He calls us to pray and to reach out to God and to be strengthened in that. After we share our words with God, it's important that we hear God's word and receive God's word in our lives. Because there's so much strength that is offered to us through the words of this book. And right now, words are really important because you and I, were getting bombarded by words in the news feeds, in the medias. And some of these words just fill us with more fear and it just sucks the life right out of us. But, but God's word is life-giving. God's word gives us strength. And so I just want to encourage all of us to spend time every day in God's word. Maybe through the reading plan, maybe just reading the one verse on our app. But however you receive it, whether it be on your Bible app or a hard copy of the Bible in your lap, ask the Holy Spirit to show you what you need to hear. For me, as I read this passage this week, the two words were anguish and strength. God will provide. God will give you strength. In fact, as I was doing the Bible reading for this week, I was struck by the words from Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That is strength that God gives in his word. Once you've been strengthened through prayer and through God's word, it's time to share what God's given you with others. To sow seeds of hope. And that might look like a little different depending on where you are. It might be that you text some words of scripture to your friends or, or check on an elderly neighbor. 
Maybe planting seeds of gospel hope means that you collect a few more cans of fruit for Feed Lake Highlands. I want to show you a couple pictures of what's been happening in our church this week. Ministry doesn't stop if we're not able to get together. We're still providing for our neighbors in need. There are people still giving and making sure that all of God's children are fed. It's time to plant seeds of hope. If God gives you strength, let's share it with others. This week, I literally planted seeds of hope. For the kids who are listening, you may remember this little garden tomb pot that we made during Holy Week. Miss Jennifer helped us with that. It has the crosses and the dirt and the stones and the tomb. And I've held on to this. It's been sitting on my back patio, and it looks rather dismal, just rocks and dirt. But this week, I planted a few seeds and I watered them and put it out in the sun. And I look forward to the day when this pot does not look dismal, when it's filled with blooms, because I know that Easter is coming. And the same is true in our lives today. Life is really challenging right now. It is easy for our fears to become intensified. But this is also a time where God may be giving us a gift to, to pray and, and to spend time in God's word and, and to be strengthened in that, to share the strength that we're given with seeds of hope for others to experience the gospel of Jesus in time. It will all bloom. It may look dismal now, but Easter is coming. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you for the gift of Jesus. And how even in times of anguish and fear, you give strength. And so we pray that you open our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us. Help us to lean into you with all that we have and all that we are. For we trust you and we love you. We lift up this prayer in Jesus' name and all of God's children together say, Amen. So we're going to take a couple of moments to pray together this morning. I'm going to lift up a category, and then I'll invite you to take a couple of moments to either pray out loud in your home or even just to pray silently. Uh, after a few moments, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and then we can say together, hear our prayer. Uh, let's begin to pray, and we're going to begin with a couple of moments of just silence. Maybe just take a couple of deep breaths to acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is with you. This is just welcome him into your house, into your space, just for a couple of moments, and then I'll begin us in a season of prayer. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We thank you that when we offer our prayers to you. We don't offer them in our own power or in our own strength, but we offer them through the power of the name of Jesus, our great intercessor, the one who prays for us and on our behalf. And so this morning together, let us pray for the people of Lake Highlands United Methodist Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who suffer and for those who are in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the concerns of the Lake Highlands community or whatever community that you live in. Let us pray for them now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world, for its peoples and its leaders.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the worldwide church, its leaders, its, mis- its members, and for its mission, especially in this season as we share the good news of Christ in the world. And these and all of these prayers we offer to you now in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And all God's people said, amen. We're rejoicing that this morning we're no longer slaves to fear, but we are children of God. And so we don't have to live with fear in our lives, but we can walk in faith because of what God has done for us through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us worship together. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy to all my fears. I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family. And your blood flows through my veins. So I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Lift your voice where you are and sing this with me now. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. Come on, declare that last line when they say, I am a child of God. No matter what's going on in the world today, 
say, I am a child of God. One last time, sing it out. Say, I am a child of God. Now may we go forth in peace. Filled with the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, we go forth not in fear, but in faith. We go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all of God's children together say, Amen. Go in peace.